And today we're going to talk Boat about Boat. Barrett Boatworks. Oh, okay. Well, H.C. Pearson came to Grand Haven from New York in 1866 and established a shipyard in Ferrysburg, where he built schooners and steamers. When he was appointed the Regional Federal Inspector of Hulls in 1872, he sold his patents to Cyril Brown and William Barrett, who used his principles of design and construction to produce the Clinker Boat. 1887. They manufactured sail and rowboats, canoes, and steam launches. The boats were made of Michigan cork pine, white oak, mahogany, or cherry, and ranged in length from 14 to 20 feet. They were of the bent nail construction, no screws, and were priced from $25 to $125. The term clinker built referred to the lapstrack design in which the boards on the side of the boat overlapped one another much like a clapboard house. The nails were driven through the boards and then bent over to secure them, a design principle dating back to the Viking era. Well, the original building was located on the north side of the Detroit, Grand Haven, and Milwaukee Railroad tracks between Park and Cutler Streets. It was later moved to 801 Liberty. When Clinker Boat went out of business in 1901, it was reorganized for ship storage, and marina as Barrett Boat Works. Okay. Well, Barrett's was for many years the oldest continuing business firm in Spring Lake. Even before the Boat Works was founded, this site had already become one of the most historically significant in all of Spring Lake. One of the Boat Works' original buildings down was used was as early as the 1830s as a trading post during the fur trading period, obviously. At one time, Barrett's sales office was located in the former office used by the Cutler and Savage Lumber Company, which had run sawmills on that very site. Hunter Savage later traded a sizable piece of land to the Clinker Boat Company in exchange for some boat work that he needed to have done. In the 1960s, an office and a ship store was built on West Savage. This was replaced in 1997 when Pier 33 Marina erected a showroom on that site. Barrett provided several boathouses that protected Chris crafts and similar small pleasure craft from the sun and the weather. When boat builders switched to fiberglass in the 1960s, the boathouses became obsolete and fell into disrepair. The last of them were taken down in 1980. Well, William Barrett died in 1917, at which time the business was passed to his wife and children, a son Robert and a daughter Ruby. When Mrs. Barrett died in 1943, Robert and Ruby took over the business. Ruby became the sole owner upon the death of her brother. Well, Ruby Barrett operated the marina through the 1940s and 50s. Upon her death in early 1960, her last will and testament conveyed ownership of the marina to her church. Interesting. Well, in 1964, Barrett was purchased from the church by a syndicate of Jack, Dr. Jack Jordan, Bob Bowen, Tom Fullerton, and Patty Jordan. Jack Jordan died in 1979, at which time the business was taken over by the Jordan family and ma managed by the oldest son, Mitch. The business remained in the Jordan family until 2003, when it was sold to Chris Lisowicz, owner of North Shore Marina, who continues the operation as Barrett Boat Works and Marina today. Lisowicz did many improvements through the next couple years, including new docks, buildings, bathrooms, and pool pavilion. Plans for the future included new floating docks, building and renovations, and more. Today, Barrett Boat Works offers 179 slips up to 60 feet in length. The marina accommodates pleasure cruisers, recreational and commercial fishing boats, as well as everything in between. Today, a wonderful story about a Spring Lake business has been around for well over a hundred years.